She helps people from all walks of life go from knowing little about technology to having the proficiency of a pro software engineer, all within a matter of months. But how she landed a job as COO of the New York-based Flatiron School is anything but ordinary. Christy Reardon joins me to talk about how she's helping the world learn to code one student at a time. Christy, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So your career is very diverse. You've come from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, tell me about how you've gone, you, you've earned your, your, your undergrad in accounting, um, earned your law degree, went to work in wealth management at Blackstone, now you're at the Flatiron School. How did you go from kind of the financial services realm to education? Well, I think when I was in undergraduate, I was picking a major that I felt like would provide me some degree of job security. Uh, my father was a small business owner, and he always instilled that in me, that um, finding security was an important thing. And so I'd thought about going into the law, and I ended up settling on accounting and took my first position at KPMG, public accounting firm. Mm -hmm. And I found that while I was really enjoying what I was learning about business, the accounting profession in and of itself was just a little bit too technical for me. So I wanted to do something that would broaden my horizons a little bit and allow me to get into more aspects of a business. And thought about whether I would pursue my MBA or pursue my law degree and got some great advice from a mentor and a former professor of mine in undergrad who said that I was really learning a lot of the things in my job at KPMG that I might pick up as an MBA and so I ended up going to law school instead. Mm -hmm. Well let's talk about that. I that's a decision that I think a lot of people kind of struggle with, whether, you know, what they want to do after they've graduated, gone into the workforce, and then maybe want that extra level of education. For you, it was an MBA versus law school. How did you make that decision? How did you determine that that was the right thing for you? I think it was really about what I wanted to add to my skill set. And as I had conversations with a former mentor and other people who are actually in the field, I started thinking that the experience I had gotten was really in this technical field and as I wanted to pursue something that was a little bit more well-rounded um, and be more of a business leader, I felt like the education I would get with a law degree that was really focused on critical reasoning and problem solving would be a better complement to what I was doing. So uh, I actually made an unusual decision of pursuing a law degree with the intention of staying in business. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's interesting. Very unique. I want to talk about, you worked with GLG, um, and there you got to work with a, a lot of different kinds of people, connecting experts with people who kind of needed that, that expert um, attention and insight. How has that experience, working with such a diverse group, helped you at the Flatiron School? You're doing essentially the same kind of thing, just kind of more in an educational realm now. Fundamentally, that business was about learning. It was about bringing people together to learn. And I saw that technology became such a fundamental part of how we were delivering our business to our customers and just making our operations work that I realized I wanted to get closer and closer to technology mm -hmm. and I loved learning so as I thought about trying to get back to an earlier stage company and staying close to education the Flatiron School is such a unique place um, it's really attacking education in a very different path. It's providing new access to people, and especially with those fundamental and critical skills around technology that I think people desperately need today. Right, exactly. Speaking of that, you're kind of on the front lines um, of this broader STEM movement in America, trying to get people more involved in these career areas. Um, from your point of view, what does the U.S. need to do to kind of be more competitive in those areas? And what are the biggest challenges facing the students that the Flatiron School works with to, to do that? Um, we spent the last year working on a, a program uh, here for New York City residents. It's a fully funded program to give them access to the training that we do. Those types of programs aren't necessarily available or accessible um, to, to many students, and it's not what's offered in a university setting today. Mm -hmm. Our programs are highly focused on practical skills that are valued in the marketplace. Uh, we, we have 12 week long programs that get a programmer ready for an entry level software programming position at places like Fox, uh, the New York Times, Etsy, some wonderful organizations and they're able to do that in 12 weeks. And that's a very that's different path to a career than what is had in a typical university setting. Exactly. So it's kind of making these kind of vocational programs, in a sense, uh, accessible to more people. That's right. That's right. Um, 
you told me earlier that all of your career moves have been very deliberate um, and that growing up your dad was a small business owner. You mentioned that. Um, so what kind of sparked your own entrepreneurial spirit throughout your career? Where did you find that? I think it's about building things. You know, I, a, a lot of people who end up getting into the coding industry will say the same thing. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of artists and a lot of designers, and they really want to have a career where they can build. And I, I think that's why there's a bit of this renaissance around the startup ecosystems yes. and the entrepreneurial spirit and the maker economy. It's because people love building things. And I think having ownership of something end to end and being able to not only come up with the idea, but to actually deliver the results. And I think that's what being an entrepreneur and being in an early stage company, but also about building things with technology and with code is all about and why it feels so good to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So what would you say has been your biggest lesson through your entire career so far? My biggest lesson? Um, I think that you know, in terms of finding success and finding opportunities, that it's important to find a way to add value, to add value in, in the role that you have and to find value, add value in things that are around you and to develop relationships. And I think as, as long as you're thinking about those two things, opportunities will come your way. That's great advice. Christy, thank you so much for being with us. Today. Thanks for having me.